Today's thought. When God pardons, he consigns the offense to eternal forgetfulness. Author unknown. Matthew chapter 12. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered and began to pluck the ears of the corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was a hunger, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy, and not sacrifice, ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is the Lord, even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you, that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that would show, not make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive, nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory, and his name shall the Gentiles trust. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Neither make the tree good, and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned.
Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeking after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the shall shall rise up in the judgment with his generation, and shall condemn it. For she came for the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto them that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother, and sister, and mother. This chapter is one of the most thought about and talked about subjects. What is the one sin that God will not forgive? The Bible clearly says that all sin can be forgiven, but not when the Holy Ghost is blasphemed. The first task to help understand scripture is understanding the context of the verses. These verses are no different. In this case, Jesus had healed a man who was deaf, could not talk, and had a devil. The religious, but not always biblical leaders of the day were the Pharisees. These unrighteous men made it known that they thought the only way Jesus could do such great things as that healing was that he was helped by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Jesus knew their thoughts and rebuked their wicked accusation. It was this religious group to whom the scriptures were addressed. To these people, Jesus said it could be forgiven if they uttered irreverent words against God's Son, but it would never be forgiven of them if they blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. Understand who the Holy Ghost was. The term was not used in the Old Testament, although Holy Spirit was, but was used only in the New Testament. The Holy Ghost was sent to do mighty things proving that God was amidst the Jews by doing things only God could do. Here are some of the things the Holy Ghost has performed up to this time. Mary was found with child of the Holy Ghost in Matthew 1.18. In Luke 1.67, John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. Luke 2.25, Simeon was filled with the Holy Ghost. Matthew 3.11-17, the Holy Ghost descended on Jesus when he was baptized. There should have been no question that these miracles were done by God. The sin against the Holy Ghost described here was a sin of denying what the Holy Ghost had done. The hearts of the Pharisees were so hard and steeped in their unscrupulous, unscriptural philosophies that none of the miracles that God did altered their false beliefs. God knew that because of their unchangeable mindset, they would never be forgiven. Like the venomous viper, Christ compared them to their poisonous doctrines would never change. Since God does not change, I do not think it is presumptuous to assume that unpardonable sin can be committed today. The sin is not just denying Christ because it can be forgiven up to a point. Paul rejected Christ, yet he was later saved. Many terrible sinners did vile sins against God, but eventually they did get saved and were forgiven. The unpardonable sin 
is getting to the point that no working of the Holy Ghost in one's life will ever change one's belief. That person explains away the workings of the Holy Ghost and has gotten to the point that there are no more chances for him to be saved. That person's heart is hardened past the point that it will ever be softened to trust Christ as Savior. He is blinded to what God is doing. There can be hope to have most sins forgiven, but there can come a time when that hope is gone and one will not be forgiven. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, may the Lord continue to bless and guide you.